adaptation means to become familiar with. So then the more you become familiar with how you feel in changing that state of being, the easier it will be for you to do it with your eyes open as well as your eyes closed. And if you go back to the old state of being, there's a good probability that your pain or your condition will come back. So there's this kind of waltz that goes on when people are uh, learning how to heal and change. They take a few steps forward and then a few steps back and then three steps forward and only one step back. Mm. And they got to practice, practice self-regulating. They got to practice what they're paying attention to, what they're unconscious of. And if you, if you stay with it for a long enough period of time, all of a sudden now, the person reaches a point, we've measured what happens, where their chemistry changes so dramatically that they're literally in love with life. Now, imagine what happens when oxytocin is released in the quantities that we see. Oxytocin signals nitric oxide. Nitric oxide sig signals a chemical called endothelial derived relaxing factor. And that's a big word or set of words that just means a chemical that signals the arteries in your heart to literally expand. And when they expand, you're getting more blood flow in there. And just like when your sexual organs are around, aroused and there's blood flow in there, now with the same intensity, you're gonna feel it right in your heart and it's gonna be way bigger. And now the person's heart is wide open. Now, so here's the question. <laughs> A person feels those emotions. Do you think they're going to want to judge somebody else in that moment? You think they're going to want to hold a grudge? <laughs> they're not going to try to forgive. They're going to feel so amazing. They're not going to want to lose this feeling, and they're just going to say, "I forgive you. I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to give this feeling up because right. of you." Now, now that's the side effect of true transformation. The side effect is a greater level of consciousness. The side effect is a greater skill set in life. And, and I think that when you start getting good at this, then all the things you thought you wanted, you no longer want because when you're creating more brain and heart coherence, you feel more whole. And the more whole you feel, the less you live in lack. So how could you want many things <laughs> if you feel whole? It feels like you already have them. And, and that's actually when you start to see those wonderful miracles, those synchronicities, those serendipities, those coincidences happening in a person, those are experiences coming to them. That's the field dropping bread, breadcrumbs saying, keep going, keep going. And there's a synchronization between that person's energy and their future. And the side effect of that are signs. Uh, and, and that's when it gets to be exciting because every sign does what? It creates an enthusiasm and excitement. You're kind of going, hey, there's another sign. I'm going to go do it again. So you, now you're not going, oh, I have to meditate today. Oh, jeez, i got to create my life. You're looking forward you're to like, it. You're like, oh, my God, I don't <laughs> want the magic to stop happening. I'm going to get into it. And every synchronicity creates that elevated emotion, and you use that energy for the next creation, and people climb out of their lives, climb, climb out of their past. So the body's a protein-producing machine. Every single cell in your body except red blood cells makes proteins. Muscle cells make muscle proteins, actin and myosin. Skin cells make skin proteins, collagen and elastin. Your stomach cells make stomach proteins called enzymes. Um, your immune system makes immune proteins called antibodies or immunoglobulins. Your eye cells make eye proteins called keratin. So your, your body's a protein producing machine. And in order for those cells to make proteins, a gene has to be regulated. So then they used to say genes create disease, lie. It's an absolute lie. There's a very small percentage, about 5 to 1% of the people on the planet are born with a true genetic condition like type 1 diabetes. The other 95 to 99% is created from lifestyle or behaviors. The two identical twins sharing the same genome. One dies at 52, the other one dies at 88. But what, what happened there? It was the reaction to the environment that caused their genes to be switched on or upregulated to make a healthy protein or downregulated to make a cheaper protein. And, and it turns out that when you're living in stress and living in survival, you're living in emergency mode and that's not a time for growth and repair. Yeah. Well, that's a time to, to mobilize all the body's energy, all its resources from some endangered situation, real or imagined in their life. So if you're living in emergency mode for an extended period of time, and you keep signaling that gene, well, my goodness, it makes sense then 
that over time, the gene's gonna begin to wear out, just like, like taking a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Sooner or later, you're gonna start making a cheaper protein. So the expression of proteins literally is the expression of life. So then, is it possible then to signal the gene ahead of the environment? The answer is absolutely yes. Because if a person's waiting for their wealth to feel abundance, if they're waiting for their health to feel wholeness and gratitude, if they're, if they're waiting for their new relationship to feel love, they're living by the old model of reality of cause and effect. Waiting for something out there to change to make them feel better and here, take away their lack or emptiness. But the moment the person embraces the emotion ahead of the event, if they understood what they were doing and why they were doing it, then if the environment signals the gene, and it does, and the end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion, when you embrace the emotion ahead of the experience, you're signaling the gene ahead of the environment. And if genes make proteins, and proteins are responsible for the structure and function of your body, you begin to become that very person. So it's not our wealth, it's not our health, it's not our new relationships, it's not the things we accumulate, it's who we become. Yeah. So we overcome the old self, which takes a great act of will and awareness, and we become somebody else. So then when you become it, nobody can take that away from you. In fact, you know that you know how to do it, or you know that you know that you are it. And an abundant person doesn't say, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, or a healthy person doesn't say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. They don't say that, they are it. Yeah. So then most people have just been fooled by their senses because their 5% of their conscious mind is holding the intent, but their body is habituated into a predictable future or emotionally conditioned into the past. And they're, and they're saying, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm, or I'm happy, I'm happy. And the body's going, you're miserable, you're unhappy. You're, that, that thought can't even make it past the brainstem to the body. So then teaching people how to self-regulate, they have no idea when they started changing their emotional states, the amount of biological and energetic changes that take place within them and all around them. So then develop that skill and get really good at this. Then for the most part, you wouldn't be so interested in, in so many material things. You would be interested in facing off with yourself every day and asking, what is it that stands in the way between me and my future? What is it that stands in the way between me and my connection to the quantum field? That, that's, I think that's the real question. Watson and Crick you know, telling people that genes are, the, genes are a library of possibilities. So we express 1.5% of our DNA. The other 98.5% is called junk DNA. And, and that 1.5%, that's 23,688 genes we express. We have 140,000 proteins that make up the physical body. How could you have more proteins than genes? It should be one to one. Because on one gene, you can have thousands of variations depending on the signal. So I hypothesize that that other 98.5% has to be signaled by electromagnetism. That the receptor sites on the outside of the cells are, are hundreds of times more sensitive to energy or electromagnetism than the art of chemistry. Chemistry is a downward causation. So imagine the person elevating their energetic state. Well, they are going to literally select and instruct new genes, and, and those genes may, may be the ones that create more significant and faster changes in the body. I mean, how do you explain a person in one meditation that's blind that comes out as now seen?